Welcome to lecture 26 of Biology 115 entitled Ecosystem Ecology. As we continue moving forward and getting broader and broader in terms of our ecological studies, we have began by looking at population ecology, we've moved forward with community ecology, and now we've reached ecosystem ecology. And in order to introduce this topic, we'll do a first introductory flowchart, just like always, and entitle it Introduction. So now we are talking about ecosystem ecology. And when we think of an ecosystem, we have to first define it broadly as the following. An ecosystem can be defined as the following. So we'll write ecosystem. This word would define as all of the living organisms. So now we have one type of organism or thing that's living, all living organisms, in an area. So now we're confined to an area specifically plus the abiotic factors of that area as well. So now we are talking about living and non-living things within a specific area. Abiotic meaning without life. That's our definition, broad definition of an ecosystem that we're going to work off of as we move forward. A couple of key concepts to understand about ecosystem ecology. Two key concepts. They are the following. When studying ecosystem ecology, you have to always remember that energy flow, which is big E for energy, energy flow, is and always will be linear in this system, in this ecosystem specifically. It is a one-way flow of energy, in other words. It's a linear, one-way flow of energy, and we're going to be looking at that in much greater detail as we move forward through this lecture. In addition, because we're talking about a broad ecosystem, we also must mention that all the material associated, so we'll write all material associated in an ecosystem. So for ecosystem, I'm going to be abbreviating it as the following. Ecosys for ecosystem is recycled. This is a big concept to understand in ecosystem ecology simply because we're going to be looking at several different cycles and seeing how the ecosystem plays a role within those cycles. This recycling process plays a major role in how we understand this energetic flow, plays a major role in how we understand ecosystems as a whole. In addition, speaking of this idea of energy flow, we can elaborate on this concept by stating the following. When we think of energy flow, we have to understand three key points. And specifically, whenever I mention energy flow, it's in the context of the entire ecosystem. We have to first understand and go all the way back um, up to our very first couple of lectures, the metabolism lecture specifically, and understand that energy is a concept and idea that follows the first law of thermodynamics. First law of thermodynamics. This law still holds true even at the ecosystem level, beyond just that um, biological level, at the cell level specifically, at which we studied energy before. This first law of thermodynamics states, quite simply, that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Capital E for energy cannot be created nor destroyed. This is a basic idea, huge theme in all of science, um, but this is something that we have to look at one more time because now we can take this first law and understand that energy, in terms of what's coming into the ecosystem, flows in one way and simply does not get created nor destroyed, but gets transferred amongst many different levels which we'll see as we move forward in this ecosystem. Furthermore, when we think of energy, we have to start at the top. This one-way flow, there's always going to be a beginning to this energy, and that beginning usually starts at what we call radiant energy. Again, this is a concept we've studied before, specifically when we understand that sunlight is going to be the initial point of entry for energy within this ecosystem. So we'll say sunlight enters into a system. And whenever sunlight enters into any ecosystem of study, that is always going to be our first point because we're going to see that the producers of this ecosystem, 
those that make their own energy, th those that make their own food from energy, let's say, are going to take this radiant energy and trap about 1% of this radiant energy. So we're going to write trap 1% and we'll call it solar energy to be a little bit more specific because it's from the sun because we're talking about sunlight entering into the system. The producers trap 1% of our solar energy by a magical process that we have learned in great detail known as photosynthesis, a very powerful, very detailed chemical, biochemical process that producers use. And they trap about 1%. This 1% will play a bigger role when we look at the rule of 10 in greater detail in the context of an ecosystem. This 1% is huge, though seemingly minimal, plays a major role in how everything starts in this one-way flow, linear flow of energy. In addition, what we understand is that though radiant energy enters our system, just like the first law of thermodynamic states, it will not be created nor destroyed. It enters the system through the sun, and then it is transferred or converted into a more usable, Bio, biological form known as chemical energy. And that's the type of energy that we're really, really interested in. Because once we move past the radiant energy concept of energy flow, we have to understand that cellular respiration plays a major, major role in the energy flow within an ecosystem. Again, cellular respiration, a concept that we've uh, went over in great detail, much like photosynthesis, and now we're applying those two broad, huge lectures into one even broader, even bigger concept, such as ecosystem ecology. As far as cellular respiration is concerned, we have to understand that cellular respiration very simply can be stated as the process in which we have energy-rich molecules that are broken apart. Energy-rich molecules are broken apart. And what is an example of an energy-rich molecule? That is, of course, let's say glucose or sucrose or fructose, anything that has that very nice carbon skeleton structure that's full of that energy that we utilize in cellular respiration. Now, of course, in cellular respiration, we have to turn it into chemical energy. We have to convert this energy-rich molecule into a more usable form of energy, and that is going to be energy in the form of everybody's favorite energetic molecule, ATP. There's that biochemical concept one more time. And this ATP can further be then used to do cell work. Now what we have to always remember is that we have to go all the way back to the ecosystem level. This is very, very um, microscopic, this idea of turning energy-rich molecule into ATP to utilize it for cell work. But understand that every single living organism within this system will be doing this. And this is going to play a major role in terms of how energy as a whole flows throughout this large ecosystem. This is a very small uh, idea, let's say, in the sense that it's microscopic, but it plays a very big macroscopic role in the flow of energy throughout the system. In addition, not everything is going to be turned into ATP. This is not a perfectly um, efficient process. You have to remember that some energy will be lost as heat. And this is, again, going to be heat that's going to be given and radiated out into the environment. And if it's radiated out into the environment, it must then obviously be entering the ecosystem. And though it's entering the ecosystem, as this radiated form, it's actually not usable. And we're going to be seeing this idea of not usable versus usable energy as we move forward throughout this lecture. So that's the basic idea behind cellular respiration. We convert it into a more usable form. We have a byproduct known as heat that's radiated out into our system. That's going to continue this flow of energy that we see. Finally, the last concept to understand in this idea of an introduction to ecosystem ecology is the idea of matter. Again, this is a broad concept. What is matter? Matter is going to be looked at in the context of a law, which is the following. Matter can't be created nor destroyed. Again, this is a first law of thermodynamics, but this is not similar to the first law, but this is actually the law of conservation of mass. And this is going to be critical in our uh, idea of an ecosystem because matter itself is going to be moving through ecosystem. It moves through many different forms and many different ways uh, through this entire ecosystem structure.
And though it's moving through it, it's not being created nor destroyed. It's just simply being converted. And those conversions are going to be mainly looked at in one of our flowcharts that's going to be looking at the biogeochemical cycles that we observe in an ecosystem. Again, this idea of cycling energy and cycling processes are going to show up again and again in ecosystem ecology. Biogeochemical cycles are simply those processes by which so we'll write this down, processes by which matter cycles from two things. Matter cycles from both the non-living world, so we'll write non-living world, and then two and back to, so back and forth between the non-living world and the living world. So what we imagine is matter will cycle through the area at which we have living organisms and the area at which we have non-living organisms back and forth. This idea of back and forth is going to be looked at as we move forward in more detail in later flowcharts. And lastly, we have to understand that in terms of matter, the ecosystem must have two big components in order for it to really just work, in order to, for it to work as a biological system, as an ecosystem specifically. And those are the following. It must have the lowest level of producers, and it also must have within it decomposers. These two will play a critical role in the overall energetic flow, in the overall idea of recycling, in the overall idea of matter conversion and energy conversion as we move forward and see these uh, play out their roles in the ecosystem.